Welcome to Drop the Clutch Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to Drop the Clutch. This is Season 2, Episode 8. I'm Ruth as usual and I'm joined by Frankie yet again this week. So, hey Frankie, how are you doing? Hot. It's yeah. Too fucking hot. Yeah, completely agree. But we're here somehow. We haven't melted, so yeah. Anyway, we have more Lilla to review. Smart have... sick one, that's it, end of. Bye-bye. Well, not quite. Uh, we also have Gorzov to preview. True. Um, and there's actually quite a lot from more Lilla that's worth talking about that isn't Smarjlik winning it. True. In fact, I'm just looking at the top three by draw order on the program. And there are three people right there that are worth talking about. Leon Madsen, Ty Wuffenden, Simon Wozniak. Yeah. All three of them showed poorly. True. Wuffenden particularly. Um, I don't know what's happened with Wuffenden. Is that it, it, he's hit a really bad run of form, form now. Mm. Um, it, I was sat watching it and it just looks like he's moving out the way. Whenever anybody tries to challenge him, it looks like he's moving out of the way because I don't think I think he's worried about getting injured again. I think Probably. it's got in his head. Probably is. Um because yeah, he's got a family to look after as well now, doesn't he? So Yeah. But four points oh well, four four heat points from this round. I'm trying to avoid confusion with this new point system. Mm. Although we should be used to it by now. Yeah. Four points from this round. He's still stone last, 15th in the standings. I don't see him making up. Even if he does have a uh, mad burst of form towards the end of the season, he's still not going to make top six. Well, yeah. Any hope of top six now is dead. Mm -hmm. um, and I think any hope for a pick for Wuffenden is fading fast. Yeah. And that. Um, is a track that he can ride. I don't think he's ever won there. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, a, you know, he, he's put good performances at, at Gorzov in the past. He needs a big meeting. Mm -hmm. and, he needs, and he needs to follow that up with big meetings at Cardiff and Rotswav. Yeah. Um. Leon Madsen, I think similar. He's he, he's not as he's not as down in the dumps as as Wuffenden is. Um, you know, he's languishing in in eleventh place, but you know, he, he he's in with a chance if he has a good few meetings, especially when you look at the riders above him. Yeah, true. And I think Simon Wozniak, This is probably more than I was. This is more what I was expecting from him. Yeah, in, in the Grand Prix, I think he's impressed a lot. He's impressed more people than, or he's performed better than most people would have said at the start of the season, myself included. Um, but I think yeah, seven points is about where I would have put him for most Grand Prix. You know, at the start of the season. So you've got there two riders who've been in the GP series for years now, performing very badly. One rider performing at or above expectation. True. This is possibly the one. This is possibly one of the mo more open seasons we've seen. Yeah. Um, Sands Smarshlik. Uh, yeah. Has to come up. Yeah. I think more and more Lilla itself. I'm not sure if there was any kind of like if, if there was any logistical reason why they couldn't have raced on the sunday or whatever but they moved heaven and earth to get that meeting going true um it did look quite wet didn't it just a little bit <laughs> and i know i i know that the, the swedish track staff like a, a wet track is their speciality if the track needs needs to dry out quickly they can turn it around and actually make a good racing surface out of it. Yeah. Um, True. 
there was some talk about I think some people were talking about track covers uh more later uh, considering that they knew there was a downpour coming it was in the forecast um before around the start time but to be honest i think that would have been a false economy true when you consider the amount of well firstly f firstly there's the technical issues the first with track covers as we've said before they can cause a track to sweat break up quicker uh, it moves. It brings all the heat to the sur all, all the moisture to the surface. It dries out the bottom layers of the track, yeah. which means the surface doesn't bind as well. Uh, but also, you've got the simple logistical challenges. They take about half hour to remove, and then mm -hmm. you've got to grate the track for fifteen twenty minutes just to move any any surface water around, so you don't end up with big streaks across the track. Mm. I don't yeah. think. I don't think track covers were the answer, to be honest. No, they did pretty well getting it on from after all that rain had fallen. Yeah. They just got a motorway blade on it, sorted it out and got on with it. Hmm. Yeah, and I think if that was any other any other track, that would have been called off. Mm -hmm. They would have yeah. they would have come, come back on Sunday, um, yeah. But they didn't, and they got the meeting on. It was actually a fairly decent meeting. The track took time to develop, as they usually as it usually does when you have to do that kind of blading of the top surface. Yeah. Um, it took time to develop. It was actually a fairly decent meeting, not as good as some we've had in the past, Landshut in particular. But you can't fault them for the con for, for the for the conditions that they were fighting. True. Um, Kim Nielsen, I think he wanted. He, 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 there was a big thing in the in the press about him wanting to make a big statement to try and justify any return to Grand Prix racing that he could he could have. Uh, two points from five rides. I don't think he made that statement. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. I think. No, I think Kim Nielsen is a perfect example of why the GP Challenge isn't the best way of seeding riders through to the Grand Prix? No, the Just... format needs to be changed, doesn't it? Mm, because well, it needs to be like a three or four round event. Like you need to, a, a Grand Prix rider needs to have consistency. A one-off meeting never proves that. Um, no, and, and then they come into the GPs the following season and they're crap. Yeah, that's why you end up with riders like Kim Nielsen, or um, quick, think of an example. Maybe Jan Kivetch, that can perform on their day, but lack the consistency required of a Grand Prix rider. That's required for a Grand Prix rider to stay in the series. Yeah. Um, True. And is that how do you think Gorzo is going to go at the weekend? Gorzo, well. It's... Yeah, another Polish round. Yay! That was only the second one so far. Um, yeah, there's like four on the calendar. Yep. So, Heaven knows why. Think of something more original. <laughs> they need to at some point. Um, Gores off. How do I think this is going to go? Right, can you look past Smarzlik winning it? Yes, only because I dislike the guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, realistically, can you look past Smarzlik winning it? Um, unless somebody has a really good night, because yeah. The thing about Gorzov but... is, it is it, it's one of those tracks where if you have the right setup, any it, any rider can win it with the right setup, really. Mm -hmm. And you got home former and current home riders there in Simon Wozniak and. Uh. So how uh, we're asking we're again asking the question: How much does home track advantage play for those riders in particular? I don't think it will because it's a, like you said, like you said before, it's a different team that sets up the track. So the track will be different from league racing. Yeah, but that's in how the dirt is laid and mm. you know, how they prepare the track. But the there's in like the shape of the track and the way it generally rides. Mm. That's you can't take that kind of home home track advantage away. True. Um, 
I think qualifying practice will be very interesting for this meeting, assuming it goes ahead. I think forecast is good for Gorzov this time. So we should be all right. Yeah. Is it the Saturday afternoon? Well, qualifying. Yeah, or is it the following? Yeah. No, it's uh, it's on the it's on the Saturday. They try to make it so that the um, qualifying practice is the same day, except on temporary surfaces where you can't really do it. Mm. Um, but yeah, so qu qu I think qualifying practice will be interesting in terms of the times. No sprint yeah. race, so we don't need to worry about that crap. Um, but then again, how much does qualifying practice really really translate to a meeting? I don't think it does. No, I think it gives you a good indication, but you can't base any kind of prediction off it. Well, because the track can change in in the hours between the qualifying and the meeting as well. There could be a rain shower. It could be really hot. So they might have to put more water on it. You know, things like that all like have a knock-on effect. Yeah. So by the time you get to the race meeting, it could you could have had a shower or two, and it it could be like really buggy, and it's and the track's completely different. So I don't think it makes much difference really. Yeah, that's fair. Um, like I said, this is this is a track that really most riders can ride well. Um, so I think this will actually be a fairly competitive Grand Prix, even among other riders who haven't performed as well. I think in Madsen, Wolfenden, um, Lindgren to an extent this season as well. Yeah, true. I think Max Frick is in to try and make another statement in the Grand Prix as well. So, well, yeah, because he's coming and straight away, and he's outscored Wolfenden in what two rounds yep. that he's done in six. So, yeah, and he's done it fairly comfortably as well. Exactly, he's six, six points ahead of Wolfenden after two rounds. Ooh. And Wolfenden's done six, so it says a lot, doesn't it? He's, it's a statement of intent. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. come and, you know, why did well, you drop me? You're Wolf about to um, go regretting it. Mm. Well, Frick's uh, Grand Prix average is 14 points. Wolfenden's mm. 3.8. Ouch. Which I think says it all, really. Um, but, yeah, I think, I said, I think goes off any rider will win it. Any rider can win it. Uh, home track advantage, I think, will benefit uh, Vozniak, but I don't know to what extent. Yeah. Uh, also, Anders Thompson as well, but we know what Anders Thompson can do at Gorzov. Um, insert photo of him celebrating in his underpants. Ah. Uh, <laughs> did not need that mental picture. That's because for some reason that happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, as I said, I think. It's always the Edward Yansart Stadium. A lot of people criticise it for not providing good racing, and I don't really understand why. Yeah, it's it's probably one of the better Polish tracks there is in the Grand Prix calendar. True. Like I've seen, I've seen duller meetings at Torren than I have at Gorzov. Yeah, and I get a lot of flack for saying that because Torren has basically been the showstopper every season, bar three since like 2010 so mm. and even those three were only because we ended at melbourne um but you know i don't particularly like the torrent track uh, i'd prefer goes off personally mm. so i think we'll get decent racing a decent track especially as this they, they've managed to make decent racing services out of gorishan and lansha um so i'm very confident about this one um you've got two tracks there that basically well one of them is said is compared to a dust bowl and the other one is flat and long so yeah true so i'll be i, I think we'll get a good meeting out goes off i think the winner you can't can you look past magic with a straight face i would say probably not i he will likely make the final whether he wins the final or not is a quite is another question i think the yeah. odds are more in his favor because he knows the track so well 
Um, True. And he is still very popular in Gorzov. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see. I think. I think. I think I put more than fifty percent confidence on him winning it. But anything can happen. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the Grand Prix. We can look ahead. After this one is a decent break in the Grand Prix for the Speedway of Nations. So that it, like, we have Gorzov this weekend. We're not back in the Grand Prix until Cardiff in mid-August. Ooh. Oh, yes. Hmm. So there's... We were hoping we'd be able to discuss some squads, but they haven't come out yet. Not by the looks of it, which is odd, because I believe the rule book said that they should have been handed to the FIM, well, last Tuesday, mm. on June the 18th. In any case, we can speculate on it. Um, on current form, who would you pick for GB? Squad or team? The three that ride on the day. Oh, the team, okay. It's a difficult one. It's easy to look past Wuffenden, but it's hard to think of a rider strong enough to replace him, on paper anyway. I'd argue that Tom Brennan's having a really good season. He is, but do you seriously think he can mix it up with Lindgren, Smarzlik, Vosniak, uh, Frick, <laughs> Holder? He's riding against riders like that week in, week out in the league. Yeah, but this is a Speedway of Nations. This is completely different. You think like Wolfenden rides week in, week out with a lot of these riders and he's scoring big points in the leagues. It comes to the Grand Prix, he's just collapsing like a shit souffle. Yeah, but... Hmm. I'd give him a chance. Yeah, it's worth giving a chance. I think you would definitely give him a chance if this wasn't at home. If we had to go through one of the events to get through to the final you'd give him a shot um yeah because this is a final you've you, you you lose that opportunity you don't have a second gun because the final is only one leg now as well you don't, uh. you, you don't have the option of giving him a go and see if it goes because if it goes badly you basically end up with a two-man team which leaves you no wriggle room if one of the others gets injured true it's a problem GB had in 2019 at, at Togliati. Mm. Partly exacerbated by the team deciding that Dan Bewley bringing his bikes was a shit idea. Yeah. But because we're at home, you'd have backups. So yeah. You'd have like a squad of five riders. So you could, I don't know, do you have to declare a team for the actual meeting? So. Yeah. yeah, you do. Uh. Um, hmm. and, that's, and that's the problem. You can't, you, you know, if this was a two, if it was a two-round final, like the original Speed of Nations was, you could say put him in the first first leg. If he performs badly, swap him out. Um, hmm. But again, you could bring up twenty-one here, where he had two rides and two wins as well, because he yeah. was on the team that won it last time. So there's pros and cons here. But like you say, it's whether He'll it's, be able to do it, but I reckon he'd be able to do it. I reckon he'd relish the challenge personally. Oh, he absolutely would. Um, I just, I, I just think it's a bit of a gamble. I'm not sure if a team GB management will go for it because you imagine the press, the headlines. If um, Wolfenden's left out, well, not even that. Wolfenden's left out, and GB come fourth or something. Mm. Um, say like Robert Lambert has a spate of mechanical issues, or. Dan Bewley's run to the outside fails in three heats or something like that. Mm. Um, you know, it could easily happen, and it's not necessarily the fault of either of the riders. True. Uh, but then you've kind of got to look to them and say, do you really think Wolfenden could have done better with a straight face? The answer's probably not. Um, he, he seems to have a different sort of um, attitude towards team stuff though doesn't he because he could be having a shit season but then it comes to pulling on that gb race jacket and he's a he's a different rider i think what the big he, thing go on but he said last time when he got injured in the speedway of nations that he got a medal yeah but he's like i didn't earn 
that medal because I didn't ride the second day. Yeah, I think I think the big thing about Wolfenden is that unlike a lot of world class riders now, he knows how to team ride, and he, can, and he can team ride well. Um, yeah, you Union think and Lambert to, can as well. Yeah, but you think back to 2018 when Wolf, when GB came within a squeak of winning it at Rotswav, how mm -hmm. good Wolfenden was at protecting Lambert in that in those finals. True. Like, I, I if if it was any other British rider at that time, GB wouldn't have been anywhere near it, because Lambert otherwise would have seriously struggled against those riders. Well, he was uh, inexperienced as well at the time, wasn't he? So... Oh yeah, he was very inexperienced. I think he'd only just left the under twenty one scene at that time. I might be getting my math wrong, but he's like... two years older than me. So he'd still be at under twenty one level. Yeah. Because he's twenty six now. Yeah. Um But like I say, I don't I don't oh yeah, he yeah, he was under twenty one because he was reserve. He basically replaced Craig Cook for all his rights. Yes. Um but yeah, I don't for one minute believe that G B would have been anywhere close had Wolfenden not done as good a job as he did protecting Lambert in his rights. True against the other riders instead of just doing like what like Jason Doyle would probably do, which is just gate and go. I'm um, also I'm probably assuming this as well, but I imagine he'll want to earn a gold medal whilst racing for G B. Hey Robert Lambert. Oh no, Ty Wuffingham because Oh yeah, he absolutely like would. you said previously, he got a gold medal from last time, but like you said he didn't earn it because he didn't ride in the second day because he was injured. I mean, he's still earned it in that sense. He he basically maxed out his scoring until he was thrown out in his final ride. Yeah, but in his mind, he didn't. I don't get it either. I'm he, going to leave he, that thought being... process to him, but in yeah, his mind, he didn't. He's been very modest about it. I think that's the big thing. Yeah. Um... So I reckon he might uh, find what he needs to find. And then yeah. I hope... Hopefully, um, we'll see another Ty Woffing in the second half of the season. The Ty Woffing that we all know that seems yeah. to have gone missing recently. He's mm. done what Klaus Vissim does. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I th and, and taking Woffing out would be a massive gamble. Mm. Um, there's there, there's no getting away from that, especially as you don't is it's not that the reserve position is not under twenty one anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's a massive gamble. I don't know whether the GB management would go for it. To be honest, no. on form, on form, you have to say, yeah, take him out. But can the next ranked riders in Great Britain seriously compete against the likes of Smarzlik, Bosniak? Madsen, Holder, I genuinely don't know. This is where Cardiff being after the SON actually hurts Great Britain as well. Mm. Because you've got Tom Brennan as a wild card there. You could have used that for uh, as like a, a, a benchmark to see how he compete, how he rides with the other riders, but you lose that. Yeah. And like I said, the, the 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 media, the press will have an absolute field day if Wolfenden is taken out, Tom Brennan can't mix it up, and GB end up third or fourth. Yeah, true. Because the expectation, especially after last time, will be that GB win, won't it? Yeah. So that'll definitely, yeah. But... I don't think they'll be favourites. I still think Poland will be favourites just because they still haven't won one yet. That, well. Yeah, yeah, that's a big. That's still a big surprise for me. Um, I for reckon they... Poland will still be favourites, but they've just got to go into it with no pressure on them and just go and ride as well as they can, really. Yeah. So you, it's all they can do. But yeah. Yeah. 
it's it's a difficult one in any case though right that the gb management will be fucking mental if they don't put one of either lambert or Bewley at reserve yeah uh in my in my opinion that should be lambert yeah um i'll probably well, yeah because yeah. a lot of teams will do that won't they they'll put the stronger roger in at reserve and then swap them yeah, although a lot of people would say it should be Bewley at reserve because that's where he normally rides. No, no Lambert at reserve. Yeah, he's got Lambert the stronger is, rider at reserve. Yeah, Lambert is stronger than Bewley at the moment. Mm. It's not particularly close at that either. No. Because you, you could definitely argue that Robert Lambert is the best British rider this season because look at where he is in the GP standings as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Completely agree. Should we do a roundup of the leagues here? No, we can look to SON too. Oh yeah, I'm not. We've still got that. Uh, GB came seventh last year. The FI, uh, not yeah, it was last year actually. Yeah. The FIM changed the format to keep GB in it. So it's now only 18... because we're the host nation. Well, it, yeah, but it's now an eight-team format, which may change tactics somewhat mm. because it means that there will be riders getting 10 rides sure. or nine or nine rides um at most which uh that will be exhausting for riders mm. particularly uh, you know under 21 you're younger you can put up with more but still that would be that would that would that would kill you like uh I reckon at the moment, arguably your three best at under twenty one level are Leon Flint, exactly. Sam Hagen, and who else am I thinking of? Quite possibly Ashton Baljan. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> he did well in the European pairs that last weekend. Yeah. You can make that um, argument. What about Anders Rowe? Too old. Twenty two. Oh, mm-hmm. What how old was he at the start of the season? I don't know, but he's 22. Drew Kemp's too old as well now. Well, good, because Drew Kemp shouldn't have been anywhere near it. No, I completely agree with this. <laughs> but still, yeah. They, they are arguably your best three at under-21 level at the moment. Because even Connor Bailey's aged out, otherwise I would have said him. Yeah. So, you know, they're arguably your best three at the moment. At under twenty one level, name Fair more enough, names. And that's not that's not particularly strong in any case. So that's what really worries me about the future of events like this. When Woffin then eventually retires, and when Lambert and Bewley call it a day, that is what is worrying me slightly because there's nobody there to take over apart from Tom. Hmm. Yeah. There's it's... nobody there good enough to take over. Yeah, it's seriously showing the um the weakness of the British Speedway progression triangle at the moment. Mm -hmm. There is no triangle, basically. Yeah. you got a few names, maybe, but I don't see any of them remotely near the calibre we've got now. Yeah, and this is the thing. We've lost... Uh, since we lost Brennan at under-21, like, we haven't been competing at... Under twenty one no. level. No, because he was doing all the legwork. Literally. Hmm. I do apologize to other riders out there. I don't mean it as offensive, but it's the truth. We either take it or leave it with us because we won't we'll be honest, we won't give you shit. Yeah. But yeah. There's a few maybe at under nineteen level at the moment. There's maybe a couple, but other than that, I can't really see anybody else. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't have particularly high hopes for GB in, in SON two. Um, no, me neither. We'll have, we'll have to see. I can't remember. It's still Neil Vatcher that runs it, isn't it? Yeah, and he's a tosser. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do apologise if he listens to this podcast, but I'm being truthful. <laughs> We're never getting him on as a guest. 
No, but no, because I wouldn't be a co-host because I don't like him. Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, I'm not. I, I I'd want to see what team he patches together, but I don't particularly have high hopes for it. Whatever he picks, it'll be his favourite riders. It won't be anything else. He's probably crying in the corner because he can't pick Drew Kemp. I would not put that past him. To be fair, <laughs> I would not put that past him. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Putting off the talk about British Speedway for a bit longer. Women's Speedway Gold Trophy. I think that entire thing is patronising. If they're good enough, let them ride with the boys. But that's just because I'm a female. <laughs> I mean, that's one Don't way. Don't laugh at me. It's one way Don't of laugh at it. me. Don't laugh at me. I wasn't quite I... expecting that response, but... <laughs> I think it's patronising. But if they're good enough, let them ride with the boys and show them how it's done. Yeah, I can see that. Um... I don't comment either way because I'm not qualified to. Well, out of it's absolutely no offense to my fellow females when I say this, but out of the lineup they had, the only person I could see winning it was the German lady Liebman because she's got regular racing. The rest of them, I don't think, have regular racing. This isn't a think... thing for them. I don't think any of them uh, yeah, are permanently contracted by anyone. I know... Um, who was Katie it? Gordon it... rides in the NJL or something similar. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think... Well, I, uh, she at least did. I can't remember if she still does. Um, she might have aged out by now. Who knows? Well, the National League. Can no, you no, age out the National League? Oh, the no, oh you mean the Northern Junior, Junior League. League. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, I know... She, I, I, remem I seem to remember she got a place with the Red Car Cubs like two or three years ago. That's um, the NJL team. Oh, is it? I thought that was a National mm. League. That shows my knowledge. The National the, League team. They the problem in you... recently. That's the Middlesbrough Tigers. Yeah. The problem you've got, and take note, S uh, BSPA, is that you do not put the Junior Leagues on your website. So no one knows what the fuck they are. Anyway. No, I've actually got it up. I'm looking. There's nothing. Events, well, events British Youth Championships. That's it. Yeah, well, that's um, crap, isn't it? That's what I mean. Like in the old website, there used to be a thing that it's like a drop down for junior leagues. It gave you the MSDL, it gave you the NJL. You had, you know, teams, fixtures, whatever. Now you've got nothing. And in more plus history archive, wider index podcast, live streaming, nearest track, British Speedway sticker album. Do they still do that? Apparently. But it, even searching NJL returns a 404 error. Good grief. For website That's nerds. not good. No, for website nerds, that means not found. And I'm aware. Um, yeah. That's this is probably the most, most popular one, that one. Uh, I quite like 418, but I'm a nerd. So. But yeah, there is I nothing. I can't remember that one. Well, it means I'm a teapot. Um, <laughs> there is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. This was introduced as an April Fool's joke back in the late 90s. It was the um, HTTP coffee pot control protocol. It's basically if you if you had a teapot connected to that and you tried to instruct it to make coffee, it would return 418 telling you it was a teapot. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Okay. Now you know I'm a computer nerd. Right. For people I complaining, am, but, um, my knowledge isn't as broad as yours is. For people complaining, you knew, know nothing about us. There, you know something about me now. Yeah, but yeah, there is, no, there is nothing about the junior league, so I don't know who's riding what for who and when, where, or what the leagues like. I remember the Premiership Junior League becoming a thing a couple of years ago. There was like one article on it on the website. Everything just turns silent from then on in. Mm. Um. But this is the thing. The like, I don't reason know. I know there's junior racing on is because there's usually a meeting on at Perry Bar after the main meeting. But yeah. I must admit, and this is a, a thing I had about last night, juniors should not have been allowed on that track at Perry Bar last night because it was a mess really? after the main meeting. It was oh, a blue dear. groove oh, about a metre wide. Everyone loves the blue groove. Everyone loves the blue groove. And it was slippery and it caused a massive crash on the first bend 
And that is all I'll say on that because mm. I know I'm probably going to get my head ripped off the next time I go to Birmingham for saying that. But I said it several times last night that yeah. the juniors should not have been allowed out on that track. It was diabolical. Mm. Anyway, pulling this back a little bit to the um to the to, to the women's trophy thing. Mm. Um, that topic tangent. Yeah. Um. Your views aside, I think mm. that I, th I think the broader media appeal for getting women into British speed in, in well into speedway in general is a positive. Yeah. Um. I mean, it can only be like the problem you've got is that there's very little sort of media around it. Like mm. I know of two female riders, Selena Lieberman and Katie Gordon. The only reason I know of Katie Gordon is because. Um, she appeared in the in a British Youth Championship meeting that I went to, um, and you know, as a as a female rider, you, you're kind of like, oh, we'll keep an eye on it, see how they develop, because there's been a couple more that come through over the years as well. But I know nothing about any of them. I've never seen them, with, with the exception of Lieberman, I've never seen any of them compete in a professional meeting. No, like the British Youth Championship is technically still grassroots. Um, yeah. I've never seen them competing and competing in a major meeting, and I would love to see that. Yeah, same. I think I think for someone like Katie Gordon, it's not long before she gets herself a national league position. Um, Maybe I think yeah. if I were to guess, like I said, I haven't seen her ride really since 2019, but I would like to think she is around that caliber now. Um, I don't know. I haven't really watched her ride either myself no. for a while. Uh, well, back back when I saw her riding, she wasn't even on the 500s. Um, but yeah, I think uh, if I if I were to guess, but certainly based on the score that she got there, she got uh, six points. I'd say that she should, you know, I would like to see a national league club take a punt on her. Yeah. Um, and more broadly, because that you know that alone will do wonders for women in British speedway. True. Sure. Um, because like we know with British speedway, there's a massive like technical and and fitness barrier that you've got to get past mm. uh, even before you consider that this is such a male dominated sport it's unbelievable yes um like you consider moto gp or formula one i think they all have now women's events in the professional side speedway is still the big exception to that yeah and i think that's where they're coming from with this women's gold trophy yes it may be patronizing to, to it may seem patronizing to some people but it is the kind of thing that speedway needs to try and sort of talk a generation of women and say look you can ride this sport you, yeah true. this 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 is not a male sport you can do this as well if you want to mm. um where it goes from here though i don't know i think i'd like to see next year's shown on discovery plus to be honest Mm. like so that just give them a bit more sort of give them this year you know maybe give them some more sort of challenge events maybe like have a a, a composite league meeting or something between you know like just between the between like six riders a red each, team and like a blue that. team kind of yeah just like select <laughs> meetings yeah. yeah just like just like a select meeting between the female riders that were in there um you know give them that Give them a few more. Let them get the track time that they need. Develop mm. them. Maybe show next year's event, maybe the year after's on Discovery Plus. Show the public that women can ride Speedway as well. Yeah. Because that's what's needed. Definitely, yeah. Like this should have been done. This should have been done 20, 30 years ago. True. Um so I take it as you say, like, yeah, it may be patronizing, but we need it. Mm. Um, but that's the male opinion. Mm hmm. No, because if I start about my opinion, I ain't sure. So, yeah, let's leave it at that. I don't, nobody needs to hear me get up on my high horse after the work, after the week I've had so far at work. So, yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. Yeah, well, it, it feels like. It should be Thursday after this week. So, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Mm. But, yeah. Yeah, we can talk to the, we can talk to the British League now. 
Um, Yay! Nice. I've just got the roundup open. Yeah. So, I was going to say, I don't know why you're celebrating. I think your team is now dead last, aren't they? I'm not surprised they're <laughs> always last. <laughs> why would I be surprised by now? They're always last. And it's only by a point, but seriously, I'm not surprised now. Mm. I had high hopes for this season as well. So, you know. I'm just even more disappointed. Yeah, I think... I don't know why I'm disappointed, because I sort of had a nagging feeling in the back of my head that it was going to happen as well. So, mm. you know. Yeah, I think um, at this point you can pretty safely say the Premiership is now between five sides. Yes. It's and just Birmingham King... are effectively getting the wooden spoon. Well, no, Kings Lynn and Birmingham are still to duel it out for last place. Um Certainly, if Kingsland get penalised again for abandoning meetings when they shouldn't be. <clears throat> mm. uh, but I think the big Kingsland big... have two meetings in hand over us. So. Yeah, um, I think the big the, I think the big thing to watch now is um, who gets fourth because Ipswich and Sheffield are running away with it slightly. Bellevue not far behind Sheffield. Uh, I'll view a point behind Sheffield. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, Oxford and, and Leicester are going to be battling it out for that fourth spot. Yeah, and they're Oxford fairly are currently on thirteen, and Leicester are on twelve. Yeah, and they're fairly evenly matched as well. Mm -hmm. I think that will be that will be the main battle. The main battle now. Yeah, um, to see who has the better record. So far, <clears> it's. <throat> Uh, Oxford, yeah, but not by much. Aggregate point, yeah, okay. Trying to figure out this bloody table, yeah. I was doing that as well. I was like, well, is aggregate point loss? Surely that means the subtotal should be five higher. No, no, because they, they didn't get the aggregate point. Yep, just, just dumb. The aggregate point is just stupid. The aggregate point is. Fine, it's just the way they've implemented it in this fucking table. Why do we need to know how many meetings that they don't get the aggregate point from? We don't. Exactly. Just have the final column, BP, add in how many aggregate points you get from that. Exactly. Um, it's the same when it's like the, 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 the superheat thing. It's just massively overinflated the, over the table. Mm. So... Like, there's an invisible division here between home and away that you wouldn't know unless you knew ahead of time. Also, in the key at the bottom of the league scoring system, they've got APW for aggregate point win, but no APL on the mm. key. So people are just going to be sat there going, what the fuck is APL? Yeah. No, it's not on there. No. But that's... That's how they've done it. This is the thing. I don't understand how they've simplified the point structure and now somehow made the table harder to read. This is the BSBA, though. Yep. But yeah, I think championship. Uh, sorry, Premiership now is between five sides. It's. I think Oxford and Leicester could be very close. I actually wouldn't be. Looking at it now, I wouldn't be that surprised if it goes down to points difference or whatever their alternate method is. Probably how many wheelies the winning rider performed or something. I don't know. Fair enough. I wouldn't be surprised if they end up tied for for, uh, for fourth place. True. It comes down to like aggregate wins. points or something. I don't know what it comes down to. I think it might be Tiebreaker. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, I still don't get the super heat thing. It's still stupid. Yeah. What annoys me the most is the Superheat replaced the um, Golden Heats format in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Golden Heats. We never saw Golden Heats in the Premiership, but I feel like that could have been a really interesting dynamic. You know, instead of having one, that, so. instead of having one heat to break the tie, you have you, the meeting continues until the tie is broken. That could have been very interesting. That sounds like playoff hockey. Yeah. Rules. It's con it, there's no uh, shootout. It's just overtime, overtime, overtime until you get a winner, and it can drag on for ages. And yeah, no. Yeah, I would like to see it return, but I don't think we ever will. 
there's a lot of things I'd like to see returned. I don't think ever will, but whatever. Give, give Frankie the chairman's position. He'll make everything better again. <laughs> make Speedway better again. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. No, 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 don't do a Donald Trump. This isn't political. <laughs> anyway, uh, swiftly moving on. Yeah, <laughs> uh, championship. Uh, I don't really know. I haven't seen much championship. I've seen a couple of meetings in early season, but that's about it. Um, Oxford are top. Workington have surprised me because they're second. Yeah, um, I seem to remember uh, we did a podcast episode a couple of months ago where it's like they're in second place, but they got decimated by Paul. Um, yeah, Paul have got I, me. No, uh, I writ them. I wrote them off because I thought they were going to finish bottom, but they're joint top technically with eleven points. The only reason yeah. they're second is because Oxford have more aggregate point aggregate points. Mm. And then uh Paul Oxford are top, Workington a second, Paul a third, Scunthorpe fourth. Red car, it's interesting to see them languishing mid table because they're usually up near the top. Same with Glasgow. Although they've recently got off the foot and it's a surprise to not see Plymouth well Plymouth are near the bottom as always because their luck is about as good as Birmingham's <laughs> and then Edinburgh's at the bottom mm. uh yeah but the championship there's, there's such a massive divide between how how many meetings each club has done though like you've got Plymouth, Seven, Glasgow, six. Poole have done five, and Redcar, Berwick have done ten. Yeah. Like, it makes this really hard to predict. Yeah, true. Um, and plus, like I said, I haven't seen a lot of championship. Certainly not in the last couple of months, anyway. Um, you know what I wish they'd bring in? What? So if um, a team finishes top of the league, they should get a trophy as league winners. And then I seem to remember this. this I can't. I, I can't remember if this was Speedway or another competition. I can't remember if this was in Speedway or another sport, but that was kind. That was how it used to be done. That's you how get, hockey works in this country. You get a league champion, and then the playoffs is a separate competition. Yeah, I can't. I, I, was the British? I think that's like the way that? it should be done because. Yeah. Uh, uh, the thing about the playoffs is that it always makes for good TV. That's why it exists. At, yeah, but you, you can still have good TV. You just have a playoff champion instead of a league champion because the league champions finish top of the league because that's not an easy thing to do. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Um, what I want to see introduced is consolation final between third and fourth. I don't see why we don't do it. They're stupid. An extra meeting, isn't it? I see, I see them... I see third versus fourth place hockey games all the time when I go to playoff weekend and the teams don't care. They just turn out because they have to because they've been out the night before and they're all hung over and they use the <laughs> high scoring games. For example, look, hang on. I need to, uh, you force my hand. I need to pull up an example now. <laughs> For example, the third place playoff game at the playoffs at the hockey playoffs just gone. Cardiff 7, Guildford 5. But that's the thing, on the surface that seems like an interesting, uh, it seems like an entertaining game. It wasn't. No? <laughs> I only, we only went because we paid for the ticket. <laughs> well, yeah. it, I, th I think it's still, I, I still like the concept of a consolation final. Um, just people, to just, just to kind of ride in it. yeah, it's but it's money just, that talks, isn't it? Well, obviously, um, but just to kind of like just just make it clear who's third place. But I like, I know it's not for everyone. I know Poland does them. I don't think Sweden does. I fucked up. I fucked up. What have you done? It's my program from last night. <laughs> oh dear, that means you're buying the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my dad always used to do it. First person to make a mistake in the program, you know, had to buy all the drinks. And I'd say, I've got no money, buy your own. 
it's the wrong side of payday for that. <laughs> yep. That's why I do mine in Excel these days. Um, yeah. It's it's called a rub out pen. Oh, for me, it's just called a backspace key. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a rub out pen and tipex. Mm. But yeah. I think that's I think about we're... everything. Um, yeah, unless you really want to cover the NDL. Nah, this leave it. the NDL is. I've said before, it's the league you ignore unless you've got a vested interest in it. Like it's the young riders developing. Just sort of let them develop before putting them in the spotlight. Yeah. Um. Uh, Lest Leicester are running away with it anyway, so it don't matter. <laughs> the local rivalry coming in there, but I don't know what you mean. Oh <laughs> shit! Close the wrong tab. Dun. Yeah, I bet that's it. Yeah, pretty much. Goals off next. Uh, from then on in, Speed Rev Nations. Yay! Well, okay, we'll wrap but up there that, then. But with that, we will bid you adieu. Bye bye. See you later. Catch you on the next episode. Goodbye. You have been listening to episode 8 of Drop the Clutch Season 2, presented by Ruth Hanna and Frankie Sparks, recorded on the 25th of June 2024 and edited by Ruth Hanna. This was a Drop the Clutch production.